Christian. We in the wrong spot. <laughs> yo, this is the wrong restaurant the right wrong here. Restaurant. Wrong food. Yo, Jimmy, wait. Yo, this Jimmy. It's the wrong restaurant, man. <laughs> Jimmy, it's the wrong restaurant, man. <laughs> Hello, guys. I should give Blaze. I'm Fabio Pisco, and welcome to my channel. Today's video is about the RX 6000 series problems. Do they exist? Do people have problems with these new cards? The ones that could actually buy these cards? Do people have problems like they did with the RX 5000 series? That's what this video is about. And this video is also about what helps this channel and it is, for example, our monthly sponsor. Sponsoring today's video, we have our monthly sponsor, GVG Mall, offering you a Windows 10 Pro serial key for only $17 and if you use my SKAG code, you get 20% off, lowering the price to $13. After the payment, you'll receive the key in no time and you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Now guys, as for the topic, so as you know, uh, if you are on this channel for quite some time, you know that the RX 5000 series had a lot of problems. Mostly on the beginning, I was one of the lucky ones that had almost no problems across the board in any driver. I had like three or four driver versions that uh, actually caused me problems like black screens, green screens and so on. Um, after that, everything went fine. The only thing that wasn't working properly was the FreeSync. So my election driver for a long time was the 20.4.2 due to that, due to the FreeSync stability and so on. So yeah. But now we have the RX 6000 series. Do these cards have problems? Do people complain about these cards? Well, I only have one of these cards, so I can't actually speak for the majority. But um, taking in consideration my, my experience uh, that I achieved with my cards, since I have several RX 5000 series, uh, and uh, from the comments that people left in my, in my comment section, I can assure you that uh, the RX 6000 series are way, way more stable than the RX 5000 series will ever be, even at launch like they are. They have like three official driver versions and in my opinion, they are rock solid. I mean, I tested this card even before uh, the official drivers per se, uh, the official uh, certified drivers and the card was rock solid. So uh, it overclocks well, it performs well, no crashes, no stutters everything is fine. Fine, completely fine, even with just one or two driver versions. The new drivers tend to improve the performance in quite some games, not all, but in some. So, what can we ask more? Now you can ask why. But why did the RX 5000 series were such a massacre in terms of drivers, optimization and so on, while the RX 6000 series are quite fine? Well, first of all, uh, the 5000 series were a new architecture, which is the RDNA 1, and the 6000 series are the RDNA 2. Basically, um, apart from the name and the architecture being the same, it is completely different. So the RDNA 1, which is the 5000 series, uh, was a mix of the Vega architecture, so the GCN 5.0, the Vega architecture, and the new RDNA 2.0. Um, so it is a mixed bag, and I think that's why, that's why the problems uh, still persist in some cards after all this time and will keep persisting due to that because basically the RX 5000 series were indeed a beta version and we were the beta testers. That's just my opinion, I've said it lots of times, but it is my opinion. As for the RX 6000 series, that's a completely different thing because the architecture is now the real RDNA, since the 5000 series, RDNA 1, once again, was a mix of Vega and RDNA. So, yeah. So why making this video? Well, I'm just making this video for you guys that are watching the video right now or maybe watching the video in some months know that the RX 6000 cards are completely different from the RX 5000 series and they are pretty rock solid even from the beginning unlike the other cards. So if you have an RX 6000 series, for example, the RX 6800, 6800 XT or the 6900 XT, if you're having black screens or something, you have like three solutions. The first one is update your motherboard BIOS. 
the second one is install chipset drivers and the third one is try to overclock and undervolt a bit. Not, not that the third one um, is really needed, but the most effective ones are install chipset drivers that are needed in fact and upgrade, update in this case, your motherboard BIOS. So, uh, or if you are running an overclocking profile, then if you uh, install a new driver version and if you have black screens, that is due to the VRAM frequency or the VRAM, or the VRAM timings that um, are not safe, are not stable. So you need to decrease that. So basically, BIOS, chipset drivers, and maybe uh, try a stable or uh, decrease the, the VRAM frequency to achieve a stable overclocking. If you want some base, some facts uh, of what I'm telling you, well, you have this video of the how to overclock the RX 6800, you have this video of 25 games tested at 1080p, 1440p and 4K on the RX uh, 6800 and the R5 5600X, Ryzen 5, uh, and you also have this video with the same thing but 10 games at 4K at medium, high and ultra settings. So. Watch these videos if you want to see how this card performs and if it is stable or not. This video don't say much, doesn't have much content, but it is basically me telling you that these cards are awesome, these cards work, these cards have no problems, and if you have problems, uh, those three things that I told you before may fix those problems, because unless you have a defective, uh, defective card, sorry, um, but anything besides that, these cards are rock solid, so if you want to get one, get it, because these cards are worth it. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video, and see you in the next one.